If you're new to game development and want to learn Unity, this tutorial should help get you started with coding in C Sharp. In the last video, we set up a simple scene from scratch, complete with a bird, ground, and pipes. Now it's time to write a bit of code to add some life to our game. We ended the last part with our bird just falling to the ground. Now we're ready to add some flapping movement. We'll do this by creating our first custom component. Custom components are often just code written in a script. So with our bird player selected here in our hierarchy, go over to our inspector, you'll see the list of components, and at the very bottom, there'll be a button that says add component. Left click on that. When you left click on the add component button, you'll see a list of different components that Unity includes by default. If you wanna add your own custom component, we need to scroll to the very bottom and you'll see an option that says new script. Left click on that. When you do, you'll see Unity's asking you to name your new script. The default here says new behavior script, but we'll change that to player movement. Once you've named your new script, all we have to do to create it is down at the bottom, click this button that says create and add. This will create our new script automatically and add it as a component in our bird player game object. Unity may take a few seconds to catch up, but when it does, you should see our new script in the list of components here. In addition to adding it to our list of components, it also includes it in our assets folder at the very top level. To stay organized, I highly recommend moving this script from the top level into a folder called scripts. So to do that, let's right click on assets, go to create, and I'll create a new folder. I'll name this scripts. Then I'll take my new player movement script and just left click and drag it into my scripts folder. Now I can go to my scripts folder and you'll see player movement is by itself because it's the only script we've created so far. To open our player movement script, all we need to do is double left click it. Once it's clicked, Unity should automatically open up your script editor. In my case, it's Visual Studio. If you downloaded Visual Studio while you were installing Unity, then you should see exactly what I'm seeing now. If for whatever reason your script editor did not pop up, you can go up to your edit button here in Unity and click on preferences. In your preferences, you should see a section called external script editor, and you see it's listing my Visual Studio Community 2019. That's just what I have installed. You may see something different, which is fine as long as you do have a script editor, or if you don't have it attached in Unity yet, you can go to browse to look for your script editor in your folders. Now with our player movement script open, let's take a look at a few things. At the very top, you'll notice three lines that all say using. These are called namespaces. If you're familiar with C Sharp, you may know what's going on here. To keep this tutorial easy for beginners, let's just think of these like little drawers on a filing cabinet. Each drawer contains various folders and files, but we should only open ones that have the files we need to make our game. You might have also noticed that of these three using namespaces, two are grayed out. This means we're not using anything from the system.collections or the system.collections.generic. Unity includes these by default because they're commonly used in C-sharp, but we actually won't need them at all for our game. So let's remove each namespace to keep our script clean. All I'll do is highlight each of these and hit the backspace button on my keyboard. I'll click in front of my using and space that up as well. Spaces don't impact the logic, but it just keeps your scripts looking clean. However, you will notice we are using this Unity Engine namespace. If we delete this, we'll get errors and our game won't work. So to show you, I'll actually delete it myself and you'll instantly see an underlined error here. If you hover over this error, it'll tell you the namespace needed for mono behavior could not be found. It's basically asking you to add the Unity Engine namespace back. So I'll hit Controller Command Z to back out and keep the Unity Engine namespace up here. Below, you'll see a public class with the name we use to create our script. For example, this one says player movement. Next to it, you'll see another class called mono behavior. If you're familiar with C-sharp, you'll know more about why this is here. But assuming most viewers are new to coding, just know Unity needs this to access the code in your scripts. Finally, we can see two sections of code within our player movement class, one called start and another called update. In C-sharp, these are called methods. A method is just something that helps organize our code. Any code within these two curly braces is part of the method. We'll create our own method a little later, but let's take a look at the two Unity created for us, the start and update methods. Above each one, you'll notice Unity includes a short comment to tell us when it's called. If you want to learn more about how Unity calls all of its methods, I'll include a link in the description below. For now, just know that any code we put in the start method will execute when our game first starts, and anything in the update method will repeat on loop for every single frame. To test this, let's add in our first bit of code in our start method that writes a message to our console when we click the play button in Unity. Within the start method's curly braces, I'll left click and I'll type the word debug.log. 
Then I'll add open and close parentheses, so open and close. And I'll add a semicolon at the end to close off the statement. Within our debug.log parentheses, I'll add quotation marks. And here's where our actual message will go. We'll just write the words, start the game. Debug.log is quite useful when you want to see how your code is executing during gameplay. We'll see many more examples of what I mean throughout this tutorial. For now, let's make sure to save our script. And to know if your script is saved, make sure there isn't a little star by the name of your script. To save your file, you can either go to File and go click on Save, or we can hit Control or Command S. I'll left click on this to save our script, and now you can see that star is gone. Great, now let's head back into Unity to test this out. When you go back into Unity, you may notice a slight delay while Unity pulls in your new code. This is normal. Okay, as we said, our first goal is to get the words start the game to appear in our console when we click the play button. Let's go ahead and click play and see if that happens. Perfect, so our bird just falls, nothing new happens here, but you'll see in the bottom left, it says start the game. This is sort of a mini view of our console and it shows whatever the most recent message was. If you wanna see a bigger view of your console, you can go up and pause your game by left clicking on it. And here you can see it says start the game in our console. Because we'll be using our console a lot more and I'd like to see more messages at once, I'm gonna actually go down where it says maximize on play and left click on that. You'll see it deselects our button. It's no longer highlighted. Now when we go back and unpause our game by left clicking this pause button, it stays here in the view. I'll go ahead and stop our game and I'll just drag this back over. Next, let's go back into our script and copy the code we just wrote in the start method. To copy this statement, all we have to do is highlight it by left click and selecting it, and then hit Control or Command C to copy it. And then I'll go down here into our update method, left click so I know I'm inside these curly braces, and Control or Command V to paste it. You'll see it still says start the game, but let's change that to playing the game. Remember to save your script, I'll hit Control S on my keyboard and head back into Unity. Now, back in Unity, we can clear our console messages by simply left-clicking this clear button here. Let's left-click on our play and what we should expect is that start the game to only fire one time like it did the first time and then playing the game to fire tons of times once for every single frame. So I'll left-click. And now you can just see hundreds of these playing the game messages in our console here. I'll go up to stop our game by left clicking play again. I'll scroll to the very top and you should see the very first message says start the game. Nice, now you should have a better idea of how our start and update methods work within Unity during gameplay. Now let's actually create a game mechanic. I'll head back into our script. Since this is the player movement script, you might have guessed we'll create the flapping mechanic here to push our bird upward anytime the player presses a button. To do this, let's go into our update method and write an if statement that only triggers if the player clicks a specific button. You can use any button you want, but we'll use the space bar. To start, I'll simply go at the end of my semicolon here. We'll leave the debug.log and I'll press enter a couple times. Again, spacing doesn't impact the logic. It just helps us organize our code visually. So I'll type the words if, and then open and close parentheses, and then open and close curly braces. I'll hit enter just to space this down a bit. Next, inside these parentheses, let's type the word input. And after the word input, I'll type a dot or period. When I type the dot, you may have noticed that a window pops up. This window lists all the possible things that you might want to do. It can be helpful if you're unsure exactly what to type, and it does speed up writing code in general. For now, let's select the get key down option by double left clicking it. If you don't see the pop-up, you're also welcome to type get key down manually and it'll work just the same. Now, at the end of get key down, let's add one more set of open and close parentheses. You can see this red line indicating we have an error. If you hover over it, a window pops up basically telling me that I need to give it a key code. And to do that, all we need to do is type the word key code, then add a dot. So I'll click inside my parentheses and type key code. Then I'll hit a dot or period on my keyboard. Similar to what we saw earlier, we should see a list pop out of possible options. I'll just type the word space. Cool, that's actually all we need to set up our first if statement. Now let's use one of those handy debug.logs up here to get a message in our console only when we click the space bar. So I'll simply highlight it here, hit Control or Command C to copy it and Control or Command V to paste it. Now instead of this playing the game message, let's just type the word flap. Perfect, don't forget to save. 
and let's head back to Unity. As long as it's not a major error, these will automatically clear out when I click play again. So I'll show you that by simply clicking play. You'll notice this number resets, and now let's hit spacebar a few times to test our flap button. After I stop my game, you might not be able to see the flap messages in here because playing the game is firing so frequently, but to find it or make sure it's still showing, we can go to this little search bar here and type the word flap. And you can see here, it is popping up. It looks like it popped up maybe 20 times or so. The amount of times flap shows up for you may be different. It all depends on how many times you hit spacebar while we played our game. But we can confirm here, it is working as expected. Now while searching for it does work, it's usually best to see things in real time. So to clean this up, let's head back into our script. Because we get the basic idea of how updates working, we can keep this debug here for later, but let's go ahead and comment it out. To do that, simply type two forward slashes. The code should turn the same color as the comments that Unity included above in our update method. For me, this color is green, but it's totally okay if you're seeing different colors. It changes based on your text editor's settings, but does not impact the code's logic at all. Okay, make sure your script is saved and let's hop back into Unity. I'll click this X to make sure the flap isn't filtering out all of my comments. And when I click play, I should only see start the game. And then when I click flap, it'll pop up in real time. Perfect, I'll go ahead and stop. Now, even though our script is on our bird player, we need a way to connect it to our rigid body. If you remember in the last video, we talked about how the rigid body controls all the physics in our Unity game. Now, we need to send some information to it within our script. The information we want to send is just a bit of upward force when the player presses the spacebar. To do this, let's head back into our script. Now, inside our player movement script, let's go up to the very top of our public class and hit enter a couple times. And to grab our rigid body, we need to create our first variable. To create a variable in C-sharp, you need to give it a type and a name. And the type of variable we want to create is a rigid body. So I'll type that out now. Now that I have my type rigid body, the name I'll give it is player rigid body. I'll type that out next. Great. Next, we need to assign this variable a value. Since we want to get the rigid body component on our player as soon as the game starts, let's go into our start method. I'll left click right after our debug.log and hit enter a couple times. Next, we simply need to type our variable name. Let's type player rigid body. And then to assign it a value, let's hit equals and then space. Now to set our variable equal to the rigid body component in Unity, all we have to do is type the words get component. Then we'll type open and close carrots. So this little symbol here, open and close. Inside these caret symbols, just type rigid body again. And finally add a set of open and close parentheses and a semicolon at the very end to complete our statement. And that's actually it. Now we're able to talk directly between our script and the rigid body component in Unity. However, if we go into Unity and click play now, nothing has changed. We haven't really told our rigid body to do anything yet. To make it actually do something, let's go into our if statement again and hit a couple spaces below our flap debug.log. To speed things up, I'll go up to my player rigid body variable name, double click it, and I'll hit controller command C to copy it and go down into my if statement here and controller command V to paste it. And at the very end of our variable, let's hit a period or dot. Similar to when we wrote the key code and added a period, we should now see a pop-up window with options related to the rigid body. Let's select add force. So I'll go down and double click add force. If we hover over our add force, you'll see here that it requires a vector three and a force mode. We saw a few vector threes earlier when we looked at our bird player's transform component. A transform component has three vector threes, one for position, one for rotation, and one for scale. All that is is an X, Y, Z value. To create our own vector three, let's add open and close parentheses here. And with inside these parentheses, let's type new vector three. Just like that. To add our X, Y, Z values, I'll hit open and close parentheses one more time. And for our X, we wanna hit zero. For Y, I'll type five to add that bit of upward force. And then for Z, we'll add another zero. You're welcome to tweak this value however you like, but I just found five felt best to me. Great, now we need to add one more thing to set the type of force we want to apply. And again, because we wanna create that mechanic similar to flapping a bird's wings, we'll use an impulse force mode. So I'll hit comma, force mode, 
dot impulse. And at the very end of our statement, let's not forget to add a semicolon. And with that, our player movement script is complete. Don't forget to save and head back into Unity. To try our new mechanic, all we have to do is play our game. So left click on play. Now, every time you hit the space bar, the bird should flap upward a tiny bit. Of course, gravity is always trying to bring it back down, so the player will need to keep flapping or they'll eventually hit the ground. For now, nothing really happens if you hit stuff, but we'll change that soon. We covered a lot in this video. Some things may still be a bit confusing, but hopefully you now have a better understanding of Unity's overall workflow. In the next video, we'll build on what we learned and amp things up a bit by spawning infinite pipes for the player to dodge. Please leave any comments or questions in the section down below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.